Um, Vivian, I want to start with a story that I know you've told, but many people may not be aware. You became a millionaire before you even turned 30. Can you tell us how you did it and how you make it look so easy? <laughs> It certainly wasn't easy, uh, but what I really focused on is elevating how much money I was bringing home and then making sure to spend as little as possible and investing the difference. So when I was working on Wall Street, transparently I wasn't making as much money as people like to believe, but I started to develop those healthy money habits so that when I elevated my career to the next phase and started working in tech and I was taking home, you know, much, much larger checks, I was still living below my means and then investing that larger proportional difference. Over the years, I continue to ask for more and more money every single year. I always say a 10 to 15 percent raise every year and then Many, many times I got that number, some years I didn't, but anytime I would get additional income, I would make sure to be investing that, and I was able to become a millionaire by 27. That's amazing, that's amazing. And again, it wasn't from Wall Street. You also worked in tech sales, but you saved a lot of the money that you made, right? And you tried to really maximize your income. Yes, 1,000%. Um, I certainly, you know, fell into a couple pitfalls in my early 20s. I was spending money that I didn't have on things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. But ultimately, uh, as I was able to get my finances in check, I realized that I was going to be better off putting that money away, saving it and investing it so that today me could take care of future me. Was there one thing that happened, some big moment that you were like, okay, I've got to make a change. This is what I'm going to do going forward. Yes. Oh, man. I can't believe I'm telling this story. Uh, Please tell us. Very Please embarrassing. But I moved into <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved into what appeared to be a wonderful apartment in downtown Manhattan. Uh, it ended up being infested with roaches. And I ended up having to pay eight thousand dollars to break my lease. And my roommate and I at the time you know, for us, that was an insurmountable amount of money. It ended up wiping out all of the savings that I had made my very first year of work. And it was a really, really humbling moment to feel like I had essentially just run in place for an entire year. And that's when I really decided, hey, I need to get my money in check. I need to be smarter. I need to save better, invest more. And I can't really be as frivolous with my spending as I had historically been because genuinely I couldn't afford it. I had to break that lease. and. Ultimately, looking back now, I still hate thinking about the creepy crawlies, but it did teach me a very important lesson, and I'm grateful. You know, we talked a lot um, about the confidence that women have about managing their money and how so many surveys have shown that women are less confident than men when it comes to managing money. But that mm -hmm. doesn't really tell the full story. Uh, what is your view? Absolutely not. I think it is such a shame that women feel less confident with their money because the actual stats tell a completely different story. First and foremost, women have less debt across every single category except for student loan debt than men. On top of that, more single women in all 50 states own homes than single men. And Fidelity even did a study that showed women's portfolios typically outperform men's. And so when you're thinking about the narrative that we see in pop culture of women being shopaholics and not knowing how to manage their money and needing to pass that over to you know, a man in their life, it's completely false. In fact, we are just as good, just as smart, and just as capable. Absolutely, absolutely. That is the education that we need, and that's the education we need to share to empower us, to elevate us to where we want to be with our money. Vivian, too, such a pleasure to talk to you. I, I always love our conversations. I thank you so much for joining us and for being so honest about how you got to be where you are and how so many other women can just follow that. It takes discipline. It takes discipline.